like right here, this is actually, this is our wind load connection right here. And uh, that piece can basically just float up and down with the curtain wall. Yep. And you can see it better, a double right there. That allows it to float up and down. We have an additional piece. It's a, uh, it's a flat plate that goes over the top yep. of those two plates and then has a bolt that drills down into that aluminum clip just to sandwich it all together and allows it to ride up and down on the mullion. We just haven't started putting them on yet. And then we'll go up and we'll see the next floor up here in just a few and that'll be your dead load location. about this edge of slab is our attachment point on the edge of slab is slotted vertically. So we can actually adjust the J hook off the J edge. We can adjust it up three quarters of an inch and down three quarters of an inch. And we try to get those clips set to elevation before we ever set a pin. Now, if for some reason we don't have enough elevation adjustment with a three quarter up, three quarter down, that's what these jack bolts are for right here. We basically loosen this nut tighten the bolt head down to raise the panel up, yep. back it off to lower it down. Nice. If the panel's not plumb or square, either way, you do the same thing. Adjust this side, leave the other side alone, or vice versa. Yeah. So that's your that's your typical dead load location. Uh, so this right here, that's what they call a chicken head horizontal. Yep. And you've got a expansion horizontal that sits down and swallows this whenever we go to the next floor up. So you're dead loaded up the floor line, and then right here the expansion horizontal is taking up all the building deflection. So we're dead loading every floor, and then taking up all the horizontal. That's great. Uh, I don't know if you can see, it's hard to see because we've got these all taped up, but this bracket right here, it allows us to move out three quarters of an inch and move back in three quarters of an inch, which is... It's, it's huge compared to, you know, a typical wind load, dead load anchor, you know. Um, and we're actually able to uh, take these J hooks and shim them off of the J edge up to a quarter inch out from the face of the J edge. So we can do some of the adjustment and some of the layout of the panel before we ever set a panel. that the uh, the tolerance of the J edge is better than a bent plate? Yes, it's a lot more consistent. Being an extruded piece like that, it's much more consistent than a bent plate. Um, also, too, where where you have, you know, oftentimes where you have two intersecting points of a splice or something of a bent plate, you know, you'll see a lot of roll back and forth of the bent plate, whereas this being extruded, it seems to be straight a lot better of a splice. Uh, we even have certain locations where we're bridging across the, the splice between the two pieces of edge. And typically, you know, on, on a, a bent plate with wet load dead load anchors, if you had a mullion that landed there, you know, you'd have to make two custom bent clips to keep right. them straight and have your boat running through straight. So, yeah, there's definitely a lot of a lot of unseen advantages that you really can't can't understand until you've done it or used it. Very nice. These, these, these panels are about 18 foot tall here, yeah. and then the next floor up will be 15 foot as a typical location. These panels right here are 27 feet tall. They span two floors at a time, so we're basically closing in two floors of a building at once before so we walk away. Pick it up, pick it yep. up here, and put it into place. That's right, and then we're relying on the J edge as a dead load location at the intermediate horizontal. And we have a one inch cock joint built at the head and at the sill to take up any building movement. So right now they're setting a panel. Um, they're utilizing the jack bolts that are bolted to the J edge and they are adjusting the panel to elevation. You watch, they'll disconnect the cut. Once it's fully locked in, he's going to tighten up the jack bolts right now once he's set to elevation. Okay, Gavin, we're good. So he's going to come over and disconnect the power cap from the outside.
you can see down in the corner, the J-edge is mitered each direction. We have this corner that's going north-south, and we have this corner going east and west. The J-edge is mitered in the corner, so you can use a mitered clip. This mitered clip is typical throughout every floor all the way around the building. There's no no custom clips per, per corners or uh, odd geometry. It's a, it's a square corner, um, and you're able to utilize a square bracket attaching to the J-edge. Very simple setup. It's great. It's it's unbelievable how easy it is and, and how it works. I mean, shoot, this is this is such a better setup than having to do block outs in the edge of the slab or, or casting in things, doing embed drawing, doing embed engineering, embed layout. I mean, I don't know that I've ever seen a job that had even a 70% success rate with embed locations. I mean, it's just so much to coordinate. What do you think the GC's uh, evaluation is of JX? Uh, in my opinion, I think they would have great things to say about it. I mean, it's it's saved uh, the owner um, quite a bit of money. It's saved all the tradesmen a lot of money and a lot of time. It's, it's much more user-friendly to have it continuous across the building and you know, other projects where you have curtain wall coming into precast, I mean, there's no reason why you couldn't use the same exact attachment point completely going around the building envelope.